with assumptions. You'll look at the circumstances and you will assume. You'll jump to conclusions. You'll concoct all sorts of things. You had a flat tire and by the time you're through with that, you're living, on, uh, you're living out on the streets homeless, pushing a Walmart cart because you stole it from their parking lot. And you've got all your worldly goods in there. And you see yourself panhandling underneath the bridge. Why? Because you drew some assumptions. Okay? So I want to show you the benefits of looking up. Matthew chapter 14. Is anybody getting anything out of this? Matthew 14, 19. New Living Translation. Then he told the people to sit down on the grass. And Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish. And he did what? He looked up towards heaven. Well, Brother John, he was just praying. Well, let's look at the Jewish prayer. When a Jew prays, they do this. They put the prayer shawl over, and they pray. Right? But it's here it says that he looked up, where? To heaven. Where does my help come from? Where does my help come from? Where does my help come from? Let's all say it together. Heaven. He looked up. Okay, why? Because he's facing an impossible situation. I've got all these people to feed. I've got fish and bread. I don't have eggs and mayonnaise to make tuna fish sandwiches. I certainly don't have enough. Because you've got to remember, he operated as a man here on earth. So he had to look up to see how the father would handle it. Because he clearly said in the book of John, I don't do anything unless I see my father doing. What my father does, I do. So he looked up into heaven. Father, how do you want me to do this? You want me to just break the bread apart? You want me to just distribute the fish? And as the bread was being broken apart, it, it never diminished. As the fish was handed out. Because the Bible tells us in this incident... Uh, all, all those, uh, you know, uh, people, they ate their fill. I don't know about you. If I'm at a buffet, I'm going to get my money's worth. I'm going to need a wheel, wheelbarrow for my stomach. Let's go. I got my money's worth. Am I talking to anybody? Not only that, they took up 12 baskets of leftovers. Five loaves of bread, two fish. 12 baskets full of leftovers. That's an incredible seed that boy planted. You don't know if that was his groceries. You don't know if that was his lunch. You don't know if his mama sent him down to the market to get that. But when he got home, he said, Mama! Look what I got. And she probably, first thing out of her mouth, Did you steal that? So he looked up to heaven. And what did he do? And bless them. Then, breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it okay, to the people. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down this verse, and I'm going to show you some steps that you can incorporate in your life and restore the art of looking up and watching God answer some prayers. Are you ready for this? Number one, looking up creates an expectancy for miracles, for the miraculous. When you look up, it creates an expectancy for the miraculous. Every time you read that Jesus looked up, something miraculous happened. Every time you stare at your problems, something miserable continues. Now, I'm preaching good today. Are you getting any of this? Looking up creates an expectancy for the miraculous. Well, I looked up and I didn't feel nothing. Stay looking up. Are you getting this? Now I want you to notice he's given us a pattern here from this verse and I'm going to break it down. Number one. Then he took the people, uh, then he uh, told the people to sit down on the grass. What does that mean? That means you need to get a hold of the situation. You need to, you need to, you need to take a grip of yourself. You, 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 you need to establish some order. He told the people sit down. There was a crowd, it was a massive a multitude there was disarray and disorder, and he said, I need some order here. Have the people sit down in such and such. So you need to establish an order. What does that mean? The first thing you probably need to do is get yourself together. Okay, okay. Let me
me breathe. Did I pee? No, good, okay. Are you getting this? Establish some order. Stop freaking out. Get yourself together. The Bible says in the book of Luke, if you can control your own soul, you can control the city. You know what? I, I'm in chaos. God is a master of making a new world out of chaos. So I'm going to establish some order. Tell the people to sit down. Okay? And you need to pull yourself together. Speaking faith is catching faith. I try to minimize and even avoid my contact with negative people. I don't like to hang out with gossipers. I don't hang out with slanderers. People who are on Facebook all the time spreading the bad news, getting caught up with this, texting us, you know, so-and-so said this, I delete. Huh? Del we just don't do it. I don't Facebook. Because it's a rumor mill. Well, you know, I'm not gossiping. Please. I don't see you putting a scripture behind what you're writing. And Pastor John, you're preaching good this morning. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Are you getting this? You need to pull yourself together. Instead of trying to control everybody and do everything. Okay? So he made them to sit down in the grass. What does that mean? Establish an order. Okay? Number two. Receive help from others if offered. Okay? Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish. Who did he get it from? Who? A little boy. Why? Because the disciples said, there's a lad here. He has some fish and some loaves. And Jesus said, I'll take the help. He didn't say, Father, bing, oh look, loaves, they're magically delicious. <laughs> he didn't reach over to Peter's ear and, oh, got a fish. He received help. Where does help come from? The most unlikely, least expected person in the crowd. <laughs> Little boy, a lad. How old are you, son? I'm seven. But I'm here to help. If you can do anything with my five loaves and two fishes, I'll be more than happy to give it to you. You know what we do? We look at the person offering help. No, 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 no. You're not qualified. I saw you being stupid the other day at Walmart. <laughs> stupid is as stupid does. Jesus received help from the most least likely person in the crowd. He didn't say, rich man, what can you do for us? He didn't say, educated person, educated woman, what can you do for me? So sometimes God will send you someone which would seem like the least likely person on, what's a little boy going to do to help out feeding this multitude? Sir, if you'd like. You can have my fishes and loaves. Jesus said, I'll take that help. He received help. Right? So sometimes God will surround you with people that you may deem unqualified to help you. You know, the most difficult person to, to minister to is someone who thinks they know everything about God. Especially people who, who, who are educated. Well, you know, well, philosophically, hermeneutically, you know, apologetically, well, blah, 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 blah. and I've got degrees and the heebie-jeebies and everything else. You can have all the education you want, but if you don't have the anointing, you ain't got squat. Are you getting this? And a person's known by their fruit. You're always falling apart. The one that God sent you, well, let me not go there. All right. I saw some of y'all starting to scribble, you know. Yeah, the one that's going to send me. Okay. Now notice this. So receive help from others. Then it says, and Jesus took the loaves and the two fish. Okay. So uh, this was the boy's groceries. The third thing is, okay, you have to wait from orders 
from headquarters. What does it say? And Jesus looked up. We don't know how long he looked up. He probably looked up in prayer. Father, I've got a multitude here. I can do nothing without you. And I need to see how you want me to handle this. I've got five loaves, two fish. And I just need you to show me what you want me to do. What is it that you want me to do? What is headquarters saying? As it is in heaven, so shall it be on earth. Are you getting it? We don't do that. You know what we do? We stare at what we don't have. Oh my God, all I've got is five loaves and two fishes. And, and that's what we say. All I've got. Well, didn't Jesus use all I've got to make the miraculous? Well, we don't have enough because five loaves and two fishes can't handle this. Well, yeah, it can. But your perspective is wrong. What do I need to do? Well, I need to look up. Okay, Lord, this is all I got. It's like Shamgar in the book of Judges. Shamgar was a farmer. Yet he killed over 6,000 Philistines. He's a farmer. He's a farmer. And the Philistines would cross in his backyard. They would cut through his yard. It says that Shamgar had a stick, an ox goat. He had a stick with a sharp end. And he became a judge of Israel with a stick. Gideon was a mighty warrior because of a flashlight. Shamgar had a stick. Every time a bunch of Philistines came through his backyard, he'd meet them in the backyard. Hey, Este. <laughs> what you doing, homie? We don't let Philistines here, man. And so by the time those Philistines could draw their sword, he'd take his stick, gouge them in the eye while they're, gouging, while they're holding their eye and they're bleeding there. He'd jump them in the, in, in, in the stomach and he killed over 6,000 Philistines. Why? Because he used what he had and he started where he was. You know why? Because you can't use what you don't have. Ah, oh, but wait a minute. Ah, uh, we're just going to go get a credit card to cover that, bless the Lord. Yes, I've learned the system. Good, you're a master at Babylon. You've mastered Babylon. As you're hustling them, they're hustling you. I know what you're thinking. Tell me more about Shamgar. I don't know why I gave them that accent, but you know. So Jesus took the loaves and the two fish. And then he waited for orders from headquarters. He looked up, okay? He looked towards heaven. He entrusted God to show him what to do. We don't hang around long enough to see what God wants us to do. Why? Because I need to get back to freaking out. I'm going through something. I've asked you for help. You're not sympathizing. One of us has to freak out. I'm going to go over there and freak out, and I'm going to talk to God about your uncaring attitude because you should be unfreaking out with me. And we get mad and upset with other people because they're not freaking out like we are. The fourth thing is you need to speak the promise and not the problem because after Jesus looked up in heaven, he says, and then he blessed them. Okay, your words determine your destiny. He blessed what? The fish and the loaves. Was it enough to feed the multitudes? No. But what was he doing? God's principle. The father said, to, you know, in blessing I will bless thee, in multiplying I will multiply thee. If you'll bless it, I'll multiply it. Yeah, but this is all I got. I know, but you're not doing the multiplying. I am. So he looked up, and then he spoke a blessing. You know what we do? And the doctor said, and the lawyer said, and the x-ray showed, and, 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 and she said, and he said, and when she said, and he said, guess what I did? I think I feel again. Instead of I trust and believe. I'm thinking and feeling. I can't figure a way out. I've got to have another panic attack. Why? Because I think I feel. Does everybody see that? So we don't speak blessing. Father, I thank you. You started this thing. You're going to complete it. You're going to finish it. 
I thank you that you're not going to bring me all the way in the middle of the desert just to abandon me and leave me scrambling for myself. I thank you that you started this journey of faith. I may not like the living conditions, but I know I'm going to get there. I thank you, though, that the, even though this has been a grueling time in the hospital or with the court system, I know there's an end to it. I've got a due season coming, and I thank you for my due season. Does everybody see this? Do we do that? No. And we call ourselves Christian. I want to be like Jesus. Oh, Jesus, just use me. I can't. You'd fall apart if you find face a mountain. Let's go a little bit deeper. Is anybody learning? Is anybody burning? All right, number five. I'm sorry for all you flames out there. <laughs> Do what you can. Then breaking the loaves into pieces. That's all he could do. He broke the loaves into pieces. Do what you can. Why? Write this down. Big bold letters. Because you can't do what you can't do. You do what you can. God will do what you can. Jesus said, I don't do anything unless my daddy shows me what I'm supposed to be doing. I saw him breaking the loaves. I'm breaking the loaves. Are you getting this? Now, I'm not trying to take away from the miraculous power of Jesus Christ. But he's still getting orders from his father. And the Bible said the same thing about us. Without me, you can't do nothing. <laughs> and so we enter into battle and conflict in situations and circumstances without him. And that's why we feel helpless and hopeless because we can't do nothing. I can't make them change their mind. God says, I can make them change their mind. Ask me. Well, I, you know, I said this, this, and this, and they didn't get the hint. I, ask me, I can change their mind. You know, and I tried dropping hints. Well, ask me and I can change your mind. No, you can't, Lord. Yes, I can. I can change the heart of a king like I can bend a river. Are you getting any of this? So he broke the loaves into pieces. Stop trying to figure God out. Lord, how are you going to do this? Well, I'm going to do the exact opposite of what you think I'm going to do. I'm going to bring it down to a small thing. And when it looks like it's almost about to blow up in your face, I'm going to go, devil, boo. Ah! And the blessings will flourish. Do what you can, and God will do what you can. Well, I can complain, well, or I can praise him. Well, I can fall apart, or I can build up my faith. I know, I need a scapegoat. I need an azazel to put my hands on. Number six, allow others to help you. It says he gave the bread to the disciples. You need to allow others, okay, to be used by God on your behalf. What does that mean? That means they may not do it the way that you do it, but they'll get it done. Why? Because they're walking in their anointing, not your anointing. Well, that's not the way I would do it. Well, then you're a controller. You don't trust. You see this with, with spouses a lot. He'll come home, honey, so-and-so said this, blah, 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 and I said this. And she'll go, well, why'd you say that? Uh, because that's me. Well, why didn't you say this? Because I'm not you. If you were there, you could have said that. You weren't there. I was there. This is what I said. This is how I handle it. Well, why'd you do that? Because you weren't there. Well, what'd she say? I just told you everything. I'm a guy. I gave you the noun and the verb. No, I need adjectives, adverbs, pronouns. No, 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 no. One quadrant was firing. We didn't have intimacy, so I didn't go to the other side. I was slaying a dragon. This was the only side that was involved. Are you getting any of this? Everybody understand a man's and a woman's brains are two different things. I'm going to tell it to you again. I'm glad you heard it. A man's brain is a big cabinet with individual drawers. These drawers never touch one another. And there are never is there time when two drawers are pulled out at the same time. You want to talk about something? Here's this drawer. We finished talking about it? Yes. Boom. Well, I want to 
I'm talking about this and this. No, 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 no. We can't pull out several drawers. They're stuck. Just one drawer at a time, then put it back. Now, a woman's brain is a ball of wire. <laughs> you could talk about multiple things and just... And a man, all he has to do is learn not to say anything, but just ask a question and to empathize, well, I can see why you would feel that way. What a man interprets as her complaining is actually her fixing herself. So a man just needs to learn, well, you just should take a shotgun and blow his nose off. No, that's what a man would do. It's wrong box. Our boxes don't touch one another. As the wires are just firing and so forth, the woman is fixing herself, and all of a sudden you're the hero because you listen and you ask questions. What does a man do? Men don't ask questions. We, we transfer information. Are you getting this? Two different planets, two different ways of thinking it. Well, why didn't you say that? I don't have wires in my box. <laughs> well, uh, you're just cold-blooded. Don't you feel anything? That's a real tiny box back here. <laughs> why? Because these are all my dragon slaying boxes. Am I helping anybody? I just healed a marriage. Look at that. She bought by side. Allow others to help you. You don't have to control them. Don't have to tell them what to do. Women are notorious for this. That's why they're always worn out, freak out, and sick. Corinthians tells us that you can get sick before your time, and you can die before your time. Why? Because you can't master worry. You let fear control you. Notice how quiet I got. We went from, <laughs> yeah, boxes, I got to, ooh. Okay. Number seven, let go and let God. What happened? He gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it to the people. You need to trust that God will send you, uh, that God will flow through others to get it done on your behalf and to get it done on time. We always want to step outside of the airplane, push it so it'll fly faster. Just trust others to do it. Karen and I, we have a wonderful relationship, but we do everything opposite. She cooks wrong. She thinks I cook wrong. She drives wrong. I know I don't, but I think she drives wrong. But because she's got a hammy, she thinks she's Mario Andretti. We don't agree on things. But that's the joy of being together, is you respect one another's differences. And there's a time when I just need to kick back, shut up, and say nothing, and let her anointing take charge. And there's other times she just go, honey, go get them. <laughs> let me put my teeth in. <laughs> Are you getting it? You, sometimes you just got to let go and let God move through others. Let me show you another benefit. Let's go to the book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 34. Let me begin my closing. Did this help anybody? Mark 7, 34. Then Jesus looked up in prayer. What did he do? He looked up in prayer. He groaned mightily and commanded, uh, he commanded and he said, Ephatha, open up. Jesus, in this situation, is frustrated. And I want you to see the principle that in the middle of being frustrated, he could let the frustration get to him because it says he groaned mightily. If you read it, you know, in other versions, he was mad. He's upset. Ah! So he had the ability to get overwhelmed emotionally. But what did he do? He brought order to it. He's going to look up. I'm going to get these emotions under control. Father, what would you have me do? You want me to just say open? I'll say open. Epitha. Ears open up and hear. When Jesus said, how much longer must I suffer to be with you? That's a phrase of frustration. That's kind of like saying, when the cock of duty are you going to get it? What part of duh do you not get? You ever been frustrated? 
So he's frustrated at the disciples. He's frustrated at the situation because he says he groaned mightily. Read it in the other translation. He's not too happy about it. But instead of letting the emotions get the best of it, he what? See, I would be like, in my mind, Lord, I'm going to kill him. You're going to have to tell me what to do because I've got a vision of a hand grenade in their mouth laying on a table like a pig with an apple in it. I'm pulling the pin and I'm like snidely whiplash in the old cartoons. <laughs> and I'm just waiting for the... <laughs> but he's getting his frustration in check. Okay? So number eight, looking up diffuses frustration and anxiety. That's what he did. Okay? Jesus <laughs> diffused his frustration over his situation by how? Looking up. How did he look up in prayer? He didn't look up, God, I know you're not up there because I tried this healing thing and it didn't work. In the book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 55. But, but he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of the Father. This is Stephen at his deathbed. He's, <laughs> He's had rocks thrown at him. He's dying. He's about to move on over to the other side. So what I'm trying to show you, it says he was full of the Holy Ghost and he looked up into heaven. When believers die, they see their final destination. I don't know how many times I've been in hospital rooms, at people's homes, and believers passing away. And they're there, but they're staring at something. What are you looking at? I'm looking at my final destination. The book of Hebrews says it's a far off country. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a new city. When believers die, and they're looking... They see their final destination. That's what's happening. Now, I don't know about you. That's a good assurance. Well, you know, he died and he didn't even know we were in the room because he was leaving. It was like she wasn't even there. Yeah, because she already said, bye-bye. Where are you going? I, I see the glory. I'm being drawn to the... Well, they died a horrible death. No, they didn't. They were... I, I see the glory. Well, you know, this is what I went through with my grandma and grandpa, my family, this and that, and I'm just, and then, well, have you ever established order and, and looked up, see how God wanted to handle you, and spoke a blessing and begin to act on it? No, 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 I've just been rehearsing my pain. I've been going down painful plaza. You 
you should try the Golden Streets. They're better. No, no, I've, I've got a wonderful place in Painful Plaza because when I act this way or behave this way, I can control the people around me. They start catering to me. They give me sympathy. Sometimes they'll leave me alone if I get angry. Now, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the person next to you. You would never do that. Okay? No, verse 10. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the what? The death of Jesus. You mean every time I'm going through something? Yeah. Yeah, guess what? You're dying to yourself. Why? That he might live. Well, in your condition, I don't see how you do it. I don't. In my condition, I'd rather be at home, you know, eating pizza with a remote control. Is anybody getting any of this? Okay. So you're dying, okay, the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. Pastor, I don't see how you do that. Well, I don't. Because if it was like me, I would have been like the Beverly Hillbillies. And he backed up the truck and moved to Beverly. Don't you get tired? You betcha. But when I'm weak, he becomes strong. Don't you get discouraged? Try not to. I don't go there. Why? Because I speak to that spirit. You're not putting me in bondage with discouragement. I used to live there. I sold that apartment, remember? I used to come visit you on the side in the middle of the night. Hi, discouragement, how are you? I've missed you. I'm here to feel sorry for myself. How much is that going to be? A 20? Okay. You've never done that. Let me close with this. No matter what we may face, we can always look up and remind ourselves that help is on the way. Help is on the way. Stop looking down. Stop looking at. And start looking up. Well, Brother John, I just don't think you understand the severity of our situation. And you're saying, you know, just look up. No, if you've got a severe situation, I'd stare up. I would do like Israel, wrestling the angel of God. I am not letting go until you bless me. How long is it going to take? All night? I'm here. Well, Brother John, are you, what, are you looking for your gravesite? Where should, what pit should you fall into? Yeah, but you just don't understand. You know, I'm just so embarrassed, and I just don't want people talking, and I don't want to point the finger. And, and I, I've been doing a lot of thinking and feeling lately, not only based on what he said, she said, but what I've been telling myself in my head. Now, there's a conversation. What should you do? Father, I'm overwhelmed. I don't know what to do. But you started this thing in me. And you said you would complete it. I don't know, nor do I understand why I'm going through what I'm going through. I don't understand why they're saying this. And I don't understand why they're doing this. And if you're my healer, why am I? And, and I, I don't understand, but... I'm not trying to get information. I just, I'm just looking up and let you know I trust you. I trust you with my body. I trust you with my finances. I, I, I trust you with my mental well-being. I want to fall apart. This is Psalms, folks. This is what David did. I want to fall apart. I want to gripe. I want to fuss, cuss, and complain. I'm a good cusser. When I was in the world, I was a good cusser. Weren't you? I could make up words to make sheep turn red. Some of y'all, oh no, Brother John, I would never, oh, please. But what am I going to do? You, you're the answer. You said I have not because I ask not, so I'm asking. 
And I'm going to stay right here. I don't care if my situation gets this close. I'm not going to look at it. My situation could be breathing on my neck. I'm still, I'm still looking up. It may be screaming in my ear. Pay attention to me. No, I'm just going to look up. I'm going to get some order and pull myself together. I'm going to repent. Honey, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have took that out on you. I'm going to establish some order. Mind, we're not going there no more. I'm going to put on some praise and worship. Whether you like it or not, you're going to lift your hands up. And you can sit there just all you want to. You're just not going to do it. No, no, no. I'm going to get some order. I'm going to speak a blessing. I thank you that you're my turnaround. Even though there seems to be no way, you know how to turn things around. And suddenly, and suddenly, and suddenly the money came in, and, and suddenly the doctor said, Nope, I think I've changed my mind. Because that's the last doctor I encountered, she talked like that. Nope, I think I've changed my mind. Are you getting this? Begin to practice again the lost art of looking up. Stop looking down. Stop looking at. And start looking up. Why? Because it says, and Jesus knew what he would do. God will give you an answer if you look up long enough. Did you learn anything this morning? Give the Lord a hand clap offering. Amen.